Hi there, and welcome back to another video on overset meshes. So this video is a very interesting one because we're not going to work in any case. I'm going, I'm just interested in building some context around overset meshes to understand better what is going on. Because it's very important, as I said in the beginning in the previous video, overset meshes requires a completely new way of thinking. So what we're going to talk about applies to any CFD solvers implementing overset meshes, it's not only open phone or fluent. So now let's move to to <clears throat> to the applications. So basically in the previous case we work in this. So we have the background mesh, then the mesh around the cylinder and that's all. Okay, we were working in in ANSYS fluent and also we were working up and phone and the approach is pretty much the same. So you generate the meshes independently and then you merge everything. So in the particular of open phone, you use this command. We saw that with Fluent, you just append meshes. So it's quite easy. Later we're going to see that there are some standard practices when it comes to generating these meshes and mashing the meshes. But later we're going to move to a case a little bit complicated. So you can get the idea here that we're working in the cylinder case. For us, this is the quintessential application. We can use it for everything. We And actually we use it for everything because we have a lot of data and it's relatively easy to set up. Okay. So now we add a small twist here and we add this region here. So now when we go to assemble the our overset meshes, this is how we proceed. So we have the cylinder mesh, then we refine the sounds generated independently and we merge everything. So here we're talking about an open phone jargon. And then we put everything in a single mesh. We call it here all, which will be the background. So remember the background will be the largest mesh, the mesh that is going to take to take everything. And later when we start to work in some other applications, since we make more sense when it comes to this and probably when we move to Fluent because some things in OpenFun, they don't work very well. So that being said, and hopefully you have some context now. So what we were doing previously case was this application. So very important, look at that here. We have a two component meshes. This is the number of cells that we have, and this is the computing time. So I didn't talk any, anything i didn't say anything about computing time in the previous time because it's a little bit high you know as you recall we run with a single single mesh and it was like one minute so why in the world this computing time is so hard so the first thing is that you will realize that the mesh we have more cells but also we have this much more cells because look at that we have the component mesh the cylinder and then we have the background mesh but remember that here we're interpolating solutions from one mesh to the other so this is a very important standard practice okay when constructing your overset meshes, you need to have the area, the cells between different component meshes, they need to be uh, very close, okay? They need to be very similar. So this is why we have this. A very big background mesh in such a way that we have a lot of similarity. But then why we want to, to, to use a three component mesh? Well, we can save a lot of cells, okay? Instead of having everything that fine, we have the background mesh, and then here we have a refinement zone, and in this region we have the similarity, and later we're going to see the influence of having this meshing. And look at that, we reduce it by almost, let's say, a factor of four or three, and look at the computing time, okay, like four or three times smaller. So now since hopefully it's making more sense to you, now that, that we that I'm putting here computing time and why this computing time was so high. But now talking about the single mesh, I look at that, the single mesh, now we have about 9,000 cells, one minute. So it's a, it's a big difference now. So here, let's say that our factor is something about five in the number of cells, but computing time is much, much higher. So this is already telling you that there is an overhead in our set mesh. It's not computing all this interpolation and so on. Okay, it will add an overset. So this is why I also I mentioned another you know, standard practice or recommendation. Do not use over me overset meshes when you don't need it. So if this body is fixed, it makes absolutely no sense 
at least today to use uh, over set meshes. Okay, you use this when things are moving. And then we compare the three component mesh again with the single grid mesh. And now see that things here are very, very similar. Okay, it's not that much the difference. And the computing time also it start to get very similar. So here you can, if you look at this number, you will see that over set meshes, it will add an overhead, something in between. It's difficult to put a metric there, but it will be something in between two to eight times slower. So it is adding that overhead and which is more important is also adding an overhead in memory consumption. So you will see that when you use overset measures and we look at that in the previous case that when we were playing with those options in open phone, use layer, you have whole layers and use that areas, you, you, you were using more memory and it was also slower the computation. So hope now you get you, you you have a much better idea what is happening and things will become very interesting in this case it still things are not moving but this will be our last application it's very important to understand what is happening and then we put things into motion but you can get an idea here that is you want to move this cylinder just put it into motion and that's all compute the interpolation if you want to get also the refining zone, it will move also with the cylinder. Okay, so here you can put very large displacement. So you can say that this cylinder move from here to, to here. Instead, you do this with a single grid mesh and that will be difficult. So single grid mesh can accommodate a lot of displacement, but going very close to the top boundary, it will deform the mesh too much, okay? The quality, it will reduce a lot and that will give you problems, eventually it will diverge. So this is the advantage of overset meshes. You use it when traditional methods, they cannot give you a solution or it's extremely difficult to, to get a solution. So now let's talk about a comparison now. So this is a case, I have to say cherry pick case is still now this quintessential application, this linear case, but the setup that we have here, I know giving you this setup, by the way, in the video description, you can download these cases and, and so on, but I'm not giving you the detail this setup because here we, 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 we tweak a lot of parameters when it comes to how to do interpolation, linear solvers and so on to get a good agreement. But here you can see that we have single body fitted mesh. We have uh, two component meshes and then look at it. You can also do stuff like this. Okay. So instead, but to reduce this all count, you can add a stretch in here and see what happens. And then we have the three components. But what is interesting that in this case that we have the word set meshes and we add stretching to reduce this little count, this is our solution here. So this is another standard practice. Okay, so do not add a stretching where you have the overset boundary, as we saw in the previous videos that you need to define an overset boundary. So if you add a stretching there, the interpolation between component meshes, okay, is going to be affected. And look at here that it, it is a lot. It's not something that you say, okay, it is two, three percent. It is a lot how you are affecting the interpolation, in particular for drag coefficient, lift coefficient. We might say that we might argue that it's okay. So these are small things that you should be, yeah, that you should you should take care. So remember that try to avoid a stretching or if you add a stretching, that a stretching needs to be very uniform and you need to avoid a stretching very close to the overset boundary. So the way to do it will be to add several component mesh like, like in this case, but try to keep similar uh, sim uh, between component meshes, try to keep similar areas or volume like in this case. So if you Try to do this and you put this cell size here next to the cylinder. You will see also, you will get a behavior like this because you are losing a lot of information in that, that interpolation. So I can say that in open phone terms, that will be something like doing the ACMI interpolations. You are familiar with that. And imagine that you have a very large mishmash between different regions. So that will give you a problem. So what is interesting, let's take a look at now at the solution. So here we have. Okay, 
three different uh, mesh assemblies. So this is the standard mesh assembly. And here we have an optimized hole. So I want to point out that this optimized hole is not computing by default in OpenFone. And this is what OpenFone should compute. So this was compute with Fluent, but also I managed to, to get this optimized hole uh, manually in OpenFone. So I implemented some functions. You can use topple set and get into the source case call to compare it manually. But here the idea is that look at that we have the cylinder here. Remember the cylinder, the walls, they are all going to cut a hell in your uh, a hole in all your different component meshes. So that wall is cutting a hole here, a hole here. So if you use the standard approach in open phone, it's not going to be optimized that boundary. So look at what you're going to get. Look at that here the interpolation is very bad. There is kind of a lagging when you are interpolating. And that is just due to the strong gradient from the wall to the hole. Clearly you see here and see that when we improve that interpolation, we don't see that lagging anymore. There is some lagging in this case. And in this one, which is the opt optimal one, is a perfect solution. So this is what a good overset measure should aim for. So this is what you have implemented in Fluent, Start to CN, uh, in CFD++, and many other commercial software. They implement this. This is something that is lacking in, in, in OpenFone. So OpenFone is getting there. We saw in the previous videos that you have these two new options and you can optimize, but do, you don't get this level of t optimization. And I'm going to show you later now the, the, the big differences, but very important. These are all open for solutions. So look at non-optimized hole. There is a lagging and that lagging that you see here, we see it just uh, qualitatively, but if we measure the quantity, you will see also the CDCL, there is a lot different. And then when we start to optimize it gets much better. So what is interesting is that it's not only OpenFone. Now we're running OpenFone against Fluent, exactly the same cases. And when we have the non-optimized hole, OpenFone and Fluent, we get very similar behavior. So look at that fluent also that you see that you might say that commercial software, they might introduce a lot of black magic. You don't have it here. And actually you can enable some black magic in fluent to try to, to suppress this one without optimizing the whole, but you still, you are going to have that lagging. So very important standard practice that you need to optimize that whole until let's say the, the, this was in, in, introduced in OpenFone in last year version. Okay, but until then that wasn't possible. And that was a big problem when you were having, and this is very important, more than two component meshes with the similar cells, this problem is going to be very big. But if you have just two component meshes that like in this case, it's not a problem, but we want to save computational time and stuff like that. And that can give you problems. Okay. So here you can see open from free. It doesn't matter. You pay for the big box and you still have that problem. So this is telling you that there are a lot of standard practices it requires an entirely new way of thinking. So now we'll take a look here that we have the optimized hole. OpenFone and Fluent. I want to stress that in OpenFone, I compute, no, I carve these holes manually. Okay. So I have to implement it. Hopefully, I hope the developers in OpenFone implement this automatically, but it's you, because you do it manually, it requires a, a lot of user intervention, but eventually you can do it. But what I implemented is way beyond any practical use, but it does work. So look at that. Now we eliminate that problem. Okay. Fluent, it will do everything automatically. This step automatically open from the user will need to do a lot of intervention, but problem eliminated. So now let's talk about, so this is the, the optimization as it should be. Okay. So later I will mention how it should be that, that optimization, but now let's talk about open phone. Okay. So now we throw away Fluent and we enter now in, in the open phone rabbit hole. And here we have 
the new options added in OpenFone, whole layers and use layers. So the default option, so let's say that you didn't put anything, would be something for one, okay, whole layers and use layers. So we talked about that in previous videos. So if you know what is this, just follow in the video description, I give the link for this. But if you use this default option, you, you have this, it's a minimal hole. So it's very close to the wall and this will add very strong gradients not from the wall and that can influence the, the, your solution so that lagging that we saw previously so basically this lagging is due to the to that gradient gradient and that gradient you will have it in this component meshes and it will be even worse in this component mesh as you have larger salt so you have to be very careful but now the minute that we use the new optimization in open form which is not the the best one but look at it now we add whole layers eight use layer four and now we put further away now your <clears throat> your hole for the walls and you get this and clearly you see the difference here and this will improve a lot your solution as you see here so we have standard one that you have the lagging and now by using the new method the lagging disappear at the beginning you're going to see something but and let's see here, maybe there is some small lag in there, but then as the solution evolves, it completely disappears. Okay, so this is the influence of this, how you cut the chimera hole. And as you see that such a small influence from here to here, it has a strong behavior in the quantitative solution or in the qualitative no valutation of your solution but also in the quantitative valutation of the solution as we see here so we have it here but before going there just to mention that here also we have you no know, the these are the two open phone no optimization and here the best op open phone optimization for this specific case as i mentioned our quintessential no validation case benchmarking case this is in the case and then the whole computed uh manually okay to get something similar to what fluent can give you and as you can see the solutions are very similar so to mention about what should be the best uh, interpolation it should be something like this one here so the idea is that and i think open phone is working the opposite way so open phone is going from the wall and grow into the boundary, but when it grows to the boundary, it doesn't reach the whole domain. So look at here that you have a wall, cut in a hole, and it's perfect. So this one, it will work very well in open phone, but then when you look at the other level and this one, this one in open phone is not growing, so it's not growing enough. So the idea is that you need to, from the overset patches, you will need to compute how small or should be your hole okay so you should compute or the solver should compute the optimal interpolation fringe that usually is three to four cells and this is what you get using as a reference your boundaries same here you use as a reference your overset boundary compute the optimal interpol interpolation fringe from the overset patches and you will get a reduced you no know, region so the idea is that all these cells you are not computing the solution are eliminated from the domain and you will reduce the cell count as you saw in the beginning you now that by reducing the cell count you reduce computing time memory uses and so on so this is not what is happening in open phone so in open phone what is happening is now the default case that is the terrible case avoid this Okay, it might work when you have only two component meshes, but usually we want to put more than that and we have different grid levels and that can give you problems. So in this case here, it works much better. And this is enough now to, 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 to eliminate some errors, but more complex cases. And I want to remind you that this is a simple case, a minimalistic case. So since get very, very complex, this might not solve your problems. You might still have that lagging or some other issues. But what is happening here? So look at that. This hole is computed very well, like in here. But then the other hole in the background mesh is also using just as a reference this boundary. So here you can see also that open phone doesn't put too much emphasis in grid priorities. And this is very important. Fluent, we have grid priorities. Grid priority two, grid priority one, grid priority zero. So higher grid priority will cut a hole here. This grid priority will cut 
a hole here, but this one is not going to keep cut a hole in the other. So if you invert that order, you will see different uh, chimera hole. Instead of open phone, it will see like the walls are going to cut holes all around. Instead, this is an overset boundary, and this one is not cutting a hole. That, in theory, it should cut a hole, not to optimize. But, okay, it's different implications. I'm not telling that it's wrong. I mentioned that there are standard practices. How it's implemented in open phone probably is not the best way, but I think it is getting there, okay? It's solving a problem. However, as you get more complex geometries, it might give you more issues. So here, now we're talking about that. This is the you now the lagging that I mentioned, and then by doing this, when you solve that problem, here also comparing the solutions that I'll talk about that. And now we look at here, you now at the quantitative uh, values, and we have the single grid. Now this one is our single grid. Okay, the what we take as the as the, uh, the ground truth as the solutions, and then we have different uh, overset assemblies. So this is two component meshes and three component meshes with different combinations of whole layer and use layers. And as you can see here, the best one, the three component meshes with eight, four, it is very, very close to the single grid. You even cannot see there, but as you download the case, you can run it, but you see here that they are almost matched there. So look at by just controlling the parameters and using good standard practices, you can get very close to the single grid case, you now reducing all those interpolation problems and so on. Okay, the leaf is also a very good agreement. And in this case, we have you now the single grid against you now overset mesh with three components. And when it mentioned here, BG is just optimization only in the background mesh and optimization in all. Okay, so basically I'm referring to this. Only background mesh or the two levels. Now using fluent type optimization. And here also single grid. And then we have the all case that you can see that is the one that gets closer you now to the solution using the, the, the single grid. So it has an strong influence how you cut that hole. Uh, just before moving, oh, that's the last stuff there to show you some other applications. I want to mention that as anything in CFD over, in overset meshes, as you refine the mesh, as you get a smaller meshes, you reduce interpolation errors. So just talking about this, for instance, look at this interface here and you have this no uh, difference, you know, almost two to one ratio, you know, between a small and large. So if you reduce and keep reducing, reducing, you know, the background mesh or the larger cells, you're going to reduce those interpolation errors. But the problem is that since I'm not going to be economical, but as you keep reducing the difference between component meshes, interpolation errors are smaller. I want to stress that the interpolation and overset meshes, contrary to what you will read, it is non-conservative. There is a lot of people mentioned that it's conservative, at least in 2D, 3D, it is non-conservative. There are some numerical tricks to correct the fluxes, but you can get an idea that the point is that you have cell center. So the cell center of one component mesh is not coincident with the cell center of the other component meshes, but also the faces are not matching. The normal to the faces are not matching. So you will see that everything is that is going to add some differences in it's going to add some non-conservation, which is not a problem if you follow standard practices such as keeping you no know, uh, similar aspect ratios, areas and volume between component meshes. So don't ban, don't bang your your bang your head against the wall trying to get a perfect no mesh meshes. You should get something similar. That that will be enough, as you can see in this case. Okay, so I gave you a few standard practices. There, there is a lot, a lot more. As I mentioned, it's a completely new way of thinking. So I like this application. Okay, so this is also a very classical application in our set meshes. This was, this was done with OpenFun. Okay, and I have to stress that this was done in 2018. Okay, that was pre pandemic time. Now we're measuring everything you know, in pre pandemic. You know, this. 
blow the pandemic. But any case, pre-pandemic times, and it was very slow. It was the old open phone version. Now I need to do again this benchmarking with the new developments that I have seen. I think it will be faster, but open phone at this time, it was very, very slow. So here you have some figures, but just to mention that in open phone to run this one, and I want to stress, I only compute the, I impose the motion and I only compute, you no know, the, 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 the overset meshes, you no know, co uh, how everything is computing. There is no solution here. And it took in four cores about 16 hours just to get 200 iterations. That is just to get this animation, 16 hours. That was super time consuming. Instead running in fluent 2.5 hours. So it's a factor of almost six. Now by using Influent, everything is extremely optimized and so on and fluent way much faster. So now that you can imagine also that as you try to run the simulation, <coughs> It might be the case that computing the interpolation of the overset assembly, it will be more expensive than computing your solution. So these are things that you have to, to take into account. Also, this, this consume, consume a lot of memory. I don't recall the computer. I think it was, I was running this when I computed with 32 gigs of memory RAM, and it was using almost all the memory. Okay, just doing this simple case, but it's a very interesting case. I really like this case. Hopefully, I would share you now the meshes. Everything was done with with open phone, by the way. Snappy X mesh. This is the standard geometry that you find in the internet. There is some cleaning there, so it's a very tricky case because there is a, a lot of cleaning. But any case, so interesting in this case that remember previous video talking about introduction of overset meshes. I mentioned that overset meshes there are no new. There are they, they were developed since the first time, not since the first uh, CFD application. So here you see a little bit the evolution for these applications. And look at that in the early 80s, that almost at the beginning of CFD, overset meshes already exist. Okay, and the idea of using these meshes is because at that time, everything was done using structured meshes. And at this point, I would like to ask how many of you use overset me uh, structure meshes? I love structure meshes. They are beautiful, but generating complex geometries is very tricky. So feel free to comment that in the comment section, uh, how many of you use that one. But imagine generating uh, a structure mesh of this geometry. It is bloody difficult. Instead, instructor measures is quite easy. So this is the evolution. This was the idea of developing this method. Everything at this time was done fixed meshes, but then over time it was you now rapidly, it was identified that, okay, this is a very good methodology to deal with moving meshes, which is the top frontier. So this is how, how is this case has been involved. So in 2004, this is the the geometry so look at that the complexity but what is interesting the number of component grids that you have 267 component grids that they are all communicating passing information cutting a hell a hole between meshes and so on so the complexity is very high and we talk about something 34 millions so the last time i checked this was but i'm quite sure that should be something in 2018 or 20 way more complex. So here you have the evolution. Okay. And if you are interested in this one, you have here the reference for the paper. And now to move to another application. So this is a very, I really, really like this one. And I also are really, I'm not interested in wheels. I found you know, wheels that I recall the first time I worked with wheels and people working you now in the motor industry, car industry, they focus a lot in wheels. I didn't know why this was so important, but any case, so this is the classic, I know I don't motor by aerodynamics. This is not the classical, by the way, not the classical open phone case Another geometry, but the idea is this similar, but, but it's interesting that this is the real deal. So here the wheels are rotating 
and the motorbike is also accelerating as you see here and this level of complexity it is only possible with hours and meshes you try to do this when using a sliding meshes acmi or remeshing or combination of many techniques layering and so on and you will become crazy it will be incredibly time consuming it will take a lot of time now from from the user point of view but also it will use a lot of resources and maybe it will not be possible in Instead, our set meshes, this is what it lets you do. Okay, so I just want to uh, to mention also a big shout out to James that he conducted this this simulation. So I was really surprised when I saw these these results. It's the first time that I see this complexity in OpenFone. I have seen this stuff using fluids, in particular wheels that I have been doing, wheel simulations in fluid and when they are in contact and so on with the ground. Okay, so here also you have the, the uh, link now that you can see the whole video. It's a very long video where James you know, drives you how he managed to do this. So just to end this, uh, this review is that when you deal with of, of, of overset meshes and mentioned that you have to be aware about a standard practice, it's a completely new way of thinking. So this concept, there are many concepts, but I think in overset meshes, you need to master this concept. Now to own overset meshes, these four concept okay as i mentioned there are many more concepts so first hyperbolic mesh margin okay so yeah we have instructor meshes they are fantastic but overset meshes they do work very well when you use this kind of structure meshes and hyperbolic mesh margin that let's say that in open fun you have some things on level okay oh so an implementation that you can do that but it's not perfect but any case there are many tools that you can do that then grid caps grid caps is very important and you can see clearly here in this application as aircraft so here you have the wind tip so you need to close these grid, grid caps here and here you put it there just to close it and look at it you need to get half a good matching between different meshes and so on so coming back to this Space Shuttle, the Space Shuttle, there are many grid caps. So doing this is not easy and using grid caps can improve a lot. Your solution can make your life easier. Then the most important concept, it is color grips. Okay, color grips is difficult to explain, but color grips is like a bridge between different component meshes. Uh, but to use color grips, you need to have grid priorities. Okay, you need to control that, which is the next one, no grid priorities. And grid priorities still they don't work very well in open phone. So color grips, I will work in a video for that to show you that. And actually we'll show you how to do it with fluent that it was it was flawless, but in open phone it doesn't work because we have the greatest priority, but this is a concept that you should get familiar. Okay, so it's a bridge between different component grids. And the last one will be you know, assembly meshes and setting grid priorities, extremely important. So if you are interested, there is this beautiful paper. Okay, it's an oldie but, but goodie. So best practices in our set meshes, you have the link there. The link there, I want to mention that there are many, many, many papers on the issue of best practices. The last one I read, it was one from 2021. Okay, but this one, I think it is the similar paper about best practices is fantastic. And whatever they say here, you will find it also in newest paper. So yeah, that's all in our set meshes. I hope now, yeah, you have a better context, a context what is happening. And don't think about that overset meshes is just creating a whole bunch of meshes, put it together in interpolate. As you can see, there are a lot of things behind. And didn't talk about interpolation techniques. Okay, I just talked about you know, the general idea how to assemble the meshes. But later when we move, there are different techniques how to interpolate. But that is more into the numerics that you can reduce the error. Okay, so thank you, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Hope to see you in the next video. Do not forget to subscribe and enjoy. Bye.